Here's a tip for sharing books with your child. Use your child's name. Point out the link between letters and sounds. Say, Peter, the word president begins with the same sound as your name. Peter, president. For additional reading tips and literacy information, visit www.reachoutandread.org. I am Carol Boston Weatherford, the author of 36 books for young people, including the book that I'm going to read today, First Pooch, The Obamas Pick a Pet. This book was illustrated by Amy Bates, and it's uh, probably one of the most exciting books that I've written because I uh, have wanted to write about dogs for a long time, and this is my first dog story. Presidents make plenty of promises. Calvin Coolidge promised to put a chicken in every pot and a car in every garage. John F. Kennedy promised that we would land a man on the moon. And when Barack Obama threw his hat in the ring to become the 44th president, he promised his daughters a puppy. Heaven knows Malia and Sasha had been begging to get a dog for months. Throughout the 22-month-long campaign, they never once stopped wishing for a dog. They wore curls and party dresses to join their parents on stage before crowds of thousands. They put up with secret service agents, always on their heels. They obeyed their grandmother while mommy and daddy were on the campaign trail. They followed their parents' busy travel schedule even though that made their heads spin. They figured it was worth it if they finally got their dog. When the votes were counted on election night, the sisters felt as if they had won, too. Malia and Sasha will get their new puppy, said their dad in his victory speech. Now the whole family had decisions to make. Daddy had to choose people to work with him in the White House. Mommy had to choose a new school for the girls. Malia and Sasha had to decorate their new bedrooms. And they had to choose their dog. That would not be easy. The whole nation tried to guess which breed would wind up in the Oval Office. Would the first daughters choose a foxhound, like President George Washington's, or a chocolate Labrador retriever like President Bill Clinton's? Or would the girls take the lead from Presidents Franklin D. Roosevelt and George W. Bush and settle on a Scottish Terrier? What if Malia and Sasha chose a foreign breed? An English Bulldog, a Peruvian Hairless, or a German Shepherd? Would the American people think them unpatriotic? After all, the first dog had important duties. Meeting the presidential helicopter, fetching the presidential slippers, negotiating treats, greeting heads of state, and guarding the rose garden against invasion. No time for catnaps in the Lincoln bedroom. Sasha and Malia's parents preferred a shelter dog. A lot of shelter dogs are much like me the president-elect told the press. Strays across the country perked up their ears. Resumes poured in from first pooch wannabes. But Malia had an allergy. That ruled out some breeds. Collie, Commodore, and Lhasa Apsa, to name a few. For weeks, the family looked into breeds that would not trigger sneezes, from French poodles to Labradoodles. But the president nixed a yappy or girly dog. The family settled on the Portuguese water dog. Then talk turned to a name. Frank? Moose? All bad, said the first lady. The press hounded the president about when the pet would arrive. That's top secret, he said. The wait ended on Easter morning. The first photo of the first dog, a gift from Senator and Mrs. Edward Kennedy, made news. Malia and Sasha plucked a name right from their family tree. Their cousin's cat was named Bo. Also, their late grandfather, Fraser Robinson, was known as Diddley, a nickname borrowed from Chicago blues man, Bo Diddley. So Bo it was. Now the First Lady has a garden helper. The President has a running mate. Malia and Sasha have a new best friend, and pets everywhere have a voice in the White House. Wolf, wolf.